Ah, hello there. If you're new here, I'm Eric, and this is the second part of my P-Pump 6-7 build. In the last video, we built the foundation for the mountain of torque by doing the bottom end. This next video is going to be covering peaky power with the top end build, and later on, the funnest part of building an engine, paint. Because if you don't paint an engine, did you even build it? If this build isn't enough for you, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on future builds such as this 95 Dodge Ram where I basically brought it back from the dead after a tragic accident. But that's enough for now. We've got an engine to build, so let's dig right back into it. I've got the engine sitting flat now and the next part of the process is the cylinder head. And I'm using a 24 valve VP cylinder head as I can just bolt it right on. I got it, it's cheap, didn't have any cracks. And actually, I didn't even really intend to use it in this build, but I had it and it was machined. and. So here we are. Um, the other benefit of using this is I can just use a VP injector, no feed tube modifications needed or anything like that. However, the 6.7 has Siamese bores and with that it has these cooling ports in between. And some people have ran without drilling the coolant, the steam ports I believe is what they are. Um, but uh, I'm gonna do it just because I figure people smarter than me have engineered to have those, so I'm gonna put it on. So I took a punch and I just put it nicely in the hole here and then hit it with a hammer and that gives me my little dot to work off of. And then I've got a drill bit here. And then I got some handy dandy alignment sockets here that fit nice in the dowel holes and it holds the head gasket in its correct position. Close enough anyways. And the only other thing I can find that's different is there's a hole in the block here for this cooling port right here and the VP head, it doesn't quite fully cover. So I might take a, a die grinder and just open that up so it matches, so we can have all the flow. But otherwise, pretty much identical. Steam holes are all drilled. Uh, it's pretty stressful, I can't drill a straight hole on a good day. So I did my best with the old hand drill here. Used a smaller pilot hole after, but before I did the big drill, so that helped. And uh, everything looks like it lines up nice. So I'm just going to die grind that out and put this sucker on. Before putting the cylinder head on, I wanted to check my piston protrusion as well as find top dead center. So I have this little dial indicator on here and it's zeroed to the deck. I'm going to put on the piston right here. It looks like we're at 17 thou piston protrusion. So I'm going to run some math here and see how that works out. In addition to that, my cylinder head has been decked 8 thou, so should I want to drop a cam in later on, I need to be mindful of both of those for my piston valve clearance. But with the stock camshaft I have, I should have plenty of clearance. So we have a little bit of a jump ahead here. The cylinder head is on and it is torqued down. Um, I didn't really want to show the torquing of the head and all that. I didn't think it's really super relevant. However, I will have a video, if I have not released it, already covering all you need to know about head gaskets which will be different types of them different types of fasteners what the fasteners will hold surface finish all that stuff so if i if it's already released i'm going to have it i'll link it up in here or you can check the description but moving ahead here we've got some 7 16 mat and push rods and i've got some 7 by 14 diesel diesel auto power sac tipped injectors for the injectors for the build here but yeah, so currently I'm putting the valve bridges on and the injector hold downs on and the injectors are in here. I need the hold down for that one. But uh, yeah, it's gonna get the valve train all together here. And then I don't have a valve cover, so I gotta go pick one of those up. I'm gonna put the plenum on. So the next kind of step will be uh, having all that together. So I've got the engine in rough mock right now. And there's a couple parts, as you can see, that aren't really meant to be there, such as a 12 valve exhaust manifold. And this is really just to seal it all up and pressure wash everything. So there's like no oil on it, such as this oil filter housing. And it's easier to kind of pressure wash it all together than each part individually. And even just the cylinder head, like it looks clean, but there's just still a little film of dirt. So to give the paint the best chance to stick to it, I'll hose it all off here. This is it after the pressure wash. You can see it took some of the old paint off. I think there was some, still some dirt underneath or bad prep. So now I'm gonna take off pretty much everything I don't want painted, such as the lines, this uh, 
The engine is now masked up and ready for paint. I kind of didn't have to mask a lot of things. Just the, the gear case was the main thing. I did not want to get a lick of paint on that. But frost plugs, head studs, exhaust ports, um, oil filter housing. Should be good. This is just a dummy cover to get painted. So I'm just going to spray right over top of that. I've got a different valve cover for it. You ready for this, buddy? He's like, I, he really found out he really likes masking tape, so I had to keep the stuff away from him because he just wants. So oh, see, he's gonna look it. <laughs> so I'm gonna mix up the paint here. I'll show you what the color looks like before I spray it. So here's the color. It doesn't really show the well because I have the activator in there and it's kind of mixing with it and bubbling. But uh, I tried to match the kind of. It's like black with a kind of dark gray tinge. The original color of the 12 valves come in, so I didn't want to go full gloss black, so I just kind of went with like that little kind of darker shade as a little throwback to the to the 12 valve. So I think this will contrast nice with a lot of the stainless hardware I got and the aluminum P-pump and the nice shide injection lines. So we'll see how it turns out. This is just a single stage automotive paint. I used it on other engine builds. I had them make it just a little bit thicker as I kind of wanted it to be like kind of Enduro or like just industrial tractor paint. So it really lay on there thick and hard. So we'll see how it turns out. All right, so here's the setup I've got going on here. Uh, for a gun, I've got a DeVilbus starting line. It's a good, cheap, economical kind of start while not being the cheapest thing from like Harbor Freight or Princess Auto. Um, I've got a a water separator kind of air filter pre-filter into it then I've got a pressure regulator down here that I'll use to control the air pressure to it. I've got a fan which will be blowing pretty much all the fumes and stuff out the door here it's kind of set to low. Got the engine crane. Um, I do this outside except I don't have any plywood to kind of roll this out on and it's kind of sketchy so I think I'm doing pretty good right here. Got my light bar, shine a light on here. Uh, if you're concerned about my dog, he's in the car, so he can't be anywhere near me when I'm painting as well. And then if you're going to be doing any sort of painting, make sure you have a respirator, as this stuff is nasty. And it, you may, may not feel it tonight, or may have a little bit of a headache, but you'll feel it later on. So it's always smart to have this. So I'm going to get set up here and just start shooting paint. I might do a couple layers and see how it lays down. here I'm going to try and fix. Painting's done on the engine here. You kind of see the color in full. I've got my reference intake horn here. Pretty good, it's pretty close. Granted, this is 20 some years old and this is still wet. You kind of see it's not quite black, like eh, pretty kind of a plastic kind of color. So I think I got pretty good coverage everywhere. Laid on nice and thick, glossy. 
I always make this mistake where I paint everything and I do the oil pan last. And of course, that's when I'm just, just kind of running out of paint, but it's doing, uh, did pretty good. It's kind of call this like an industrial paint job. I prefer to have every individual piece masked off and painted. And then you can see stuff kind of like the head gasket and different kind of gaskets, like the oil cooler gasket all in between, but it's just easier to kind of paint everything all together. Um, so looking forward to taking the tape off and adding some of the hardware. And I think this will look really cool when it's all together. It's the next day now, everything's dry. Um, feels pretty good. So I'm gonna start peeling the masking tape off here and we'll take a look at how it all looks together. Most of the masking tape is off and I've begun changing a lot of the bolts out for the stainless Allen head bolts. I've used some Loctite on them and torqued them down. All the oil pan bolts are done as well. Going around to this side and just started putting the lines on the p-pumps bolted on i still have to put the lower bracket on um so the note this gear case clocks a pump out just a little bit to help with the cylinder head clearance and to clear a little boss that's on the inside here so the lines i had to do the injection line part uh into the cylinder head first then come around here and move these over a little bit but it all had it was all bolted up before here so it should be working fine and uh, then after this is all bolted up and everything's happy, I'm gonna pull the valve cover off and do the lash. So before I get on the lash, I'm gonna show you a neat little thing. If you're building a 24 valve VP engine, and I'm maybe the 5.9 common rails, I'm not sure, but I know for sure on the 6.7, um, with the rocker trunnion, I believe this is what this is, on the 24 valve VP engines, they have a tendency to gall right in the bottom here, right where the rocker arm rides. And I have a box full of these suckers and I've, I've got to say it's almost 100% every one of these is galled and has trouble when you move it in the rocker arm like this, it'll be sticky. So they had a solve for this, at least I'm aware of in the 6.7s, they had a little oil hole that comes from the center here and then allows oil to get into that rocker bore. And I've had three, four of these engines I pulled apart and every single one, the rocker trunnions are in great shape. So if you're kind of building a VP engine, maybe 5.9 com rail, not sure, uh, try to get some 6.7 rocker trunnions or rocker arm assembly. It's all the same stuff. Um, so I went and switched that out. I actually tried to refinish these ones. I put them on my lathe and uh, sanded them down and they were usable, but I was kind of sitting in the back of my mind. I'm like, well, I don't really want this to cause me any issues. And I'm building this engine for the idea that I don't want to touch it for the next 100,000 kilometers. So I went and got the proper ones here. Kind of a little bit on how the Oiling works is there's a hole in the cylinder head here that oil pressurized oil comes up that and one of the I think it must be one of these bolt holes probably this one here which would be the left side bolt hole comes up the bolt hole then oil, pressurized oil can go in between the two rocker arm assemblies it comes up the trunnion and the trunnion actually has two holes kind of near the top here that then lead to these two holes, which then, if you can kind of see, it has this kind of thicker one side to it, and there's actually pressurized oiling that gets in from that hole to the tip here. And it's kind of neat following the whole flow path of stuff. Um, and if you have kind of garbage in your system, that little tiny hole can get plugged, and next thing you know, you're not having oil on one side of the rocker, and it can gall up, and Honestly, I think you could even have no oil going to this thing and it'd take a long time for it to even to seize enough to cause you trouble. But uh, just kind of neat, learn about some stuff. Okay, on to valve lash. I have a particular way that I like to do this. Um, let's say you go put all the rockers on. I'll have all the adjusters backed out. The ones that are on the lobe, such as the exhaust rocker number one here, I will just leave them, but the ones that aren't on the lobe, I'll just kind of tighten them up until they're just kind of snug with the rocker. Then I know that this is 100%, this is on the lobe, this is off the lobe. And that's kind of my baseline here. And I'll bar it over, kind of go it till it touches, and then you kind of have your, your beginning. Now, this isn't, isn't the most efficient way of going about things, but I'll wait till the exhaust rocker or intake rocker, one of them is going down, and I'll do the lash on the adjacent rocker. That way I know 100%, it's not on a lobe, it's not on overlap, and then I'll work my way down. So I'll turn it over till this one's down, do this one, and go my way back. Um, 
for a little bit of expediency, I will look at one like this one's on the lobe here. So I'll do this guy now and don't oh, see, there he's just up. So you good to, good to start doing lash and then this guy's on the lobe, so I'll do him. And, but I still will go through them all as I work my way back and double check it all. You wanna really make sure you get your lash uh, good for the first fire up and then check it after your break in. So neat tools I use to make this job a little easier uh, is an LSM TQ-100. It's a little miniature torque wrench that's preset to 14, I believe, foot pounds. And then it has a hole in the center right here that allows you to slip your Allen key through it. And this one's a little stiff. I got to grind it down a little bit more. But the idea is that you can hold your adjuster in place, torque it, and then you don't have to go and keep guessing and going back and forth with it. And then after I get it locked down, I'll take a little paint marker, mark the end, and then I know that one's done. And then I'll go through it all. And sometimes I'll even take a different colored paint marker and I'll just mark them again after I double check them, then I know they're good. With the lash done, I could finally start putting the valve cover on. And what I've decided to go with is this 6-7 valve cover. I'll tell you a little bit more about it as I install it, but uh, what I'm gonna say about here right now is with the VP cylinder head, there is no bolt at the very front and the very back. However, if you look at the side, it sucks down pretty good. And the last time I ran something like this, I didn't have any issues with leaks. So that's the only thing. I even have a video kind of, if you want to put a six, seven valve cover on a 24 valve, I just say like, yeah, bolts right on. Um, so next for the next part here, next part of the valve cover assembly is the injector harness. And it kind of hurts to cut the wires out of it, but they're not needed. And I don't really want to have them zip tied hanging there. So remove those and then we'll do the next piece. So this next piece of the valve cover is the most important part and it's the CCV filter. This thing has an inlet and outlet and a series of kind of filter things inside there. And while it is another maintenance item, the big benefit of this is, is it has this tube on the side right here. I'll put the top piece on. This tube goes into your turbo. You might be thinking, well, I don't want to be sucking engine stuff with my turbo. Well, this is a properly designed filter system. And because of the pulling a vacuum with the turbo there, it allows you to have a vacuum on the crankcase, which when you start making some real jam, you're going to have little extra gases getting past the rings, more blow by, and having a proper CCV system will allow you to evacuate those gases and help your oil seals last. So even if you have a VP engine or third gen, it's good to swap to one of these as pulling a vacuum on your crankcase is kind of why I see more rusty 6-7 blocks than leaky ones. Uh, they're actually, they held to get, hold together pretty well. Um, another little fun fact, if you get this from a 07 to about 2010, they say Dodge here, but if you get it from like, I think 11 or 12, whenever they switch, there's nothing here because they aren't Dodges anymore. They're Rams, so they just put a blank spot. Um, and if you're going to put it on a 5.9, maybe put a piece of tape over this, uh, unless you want to kind of try and trick some people. But I'll probably refinish this later on, but it's good enough for now. It's just a junkyard find. That's it for part two of the 6.7 engine build series. I hope you're having as much fun watching it as I'm having building it. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you are so you don't miss the next entry where I modify the stock 6.7 turbo to work with this build. And I do some custom stuff. I think it'll be a great addition to the build with a blend of new technology and the older engine technology that I'm using as well. And it'll give a really broad power band and as well as a usable exhaust brake, which I can still use in a compound set, which I'll be building later as well. In the next video, we'll also be putting the engine inside the truck, and there's some other small accessory things I have to do to make the pump work with the block as well. So you're really gonna wanna make sure you don't miss out on that. There's also a next video that is kind of linked to the series, but it's not a direct entry into the series, where I do some spilt port timing on the injection pump to make sure I'm at an accurate 18 degrees of timing for the injection pump. Now, I'm gonna have that one linked in here somewhere. It's part of the build series, but it's not a direct relevant part of the build series, and I wanted to make it a standalone on its own. But that's it, and I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.